cloudy, cloudy Sunday that it is. Oh. And we get to push, cute push in. We hear you. Can you hear me now? Yeah. I did a sermon. All right. Then the Bible school will take place from Monday through Wednesday, June 17th through the 19th, in the evening from 5 30 to 7 30. Have any questions at all? Contact Christine on that. All right. He's back. Oh, man, Bob, it's good to see you, my friend. I kept telling there, I walked by the organizer, he's coming back, he's coming back. <laughs> <laughs> so let's go ahead and start the worship this morning. Uh, please rise and yeah. share. Oh, uh, Vern and Debbie's 50th wedding anniversary was yesterday. Okay. And I think everybody should know that. Yeah. All right, Vern and Debbie, congratulations.
hearts are open, all desires are known, and from whom those secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are obliged to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. God, the strength of those who hope in you 
Be present and hear our prayers. And because of the weakness of our mortal nature, we can do nothing good without you. Give us the help of your grace, so that in keeping your commandments, we may please you in will and deed. Through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated. lesson, 1 Kings 17, 17 through 24. Sometime later, the son of the woman who owned the house became ill. He grew worse and worse and finally stopped breathing. She said to Elijah, what do you have against me, man of God? Did you come to remind me of my sin and tell my son? Give me your son, Elijah replied. He took him from her arms and carried him to the upper room where he was staying, and laid him on his bed. Then he cried out to the Lord, O Lord, my God, have you brought tragedy also upon this widow I am staying with, by causing her son to die? Then he stretched himself out on the boy three times and cried to the Lord, Lord, O Lord, my God, let this boy's life return to him. And the Lord heard Elijah's, Elijah's cry, and the boy, boy's life returned to him, and he lived. Elijah picked up the child and carried him down from the room into the house. He gave him to his mother and said, Look, your son is alive. Then the woman said to Elijah, Now I know that you are a man of God and that the word of the Lord from your mouth is the truth. That is the lesson. Uh, please open up to page 228 in your green hymnal. I'll follow along on the screen. And we'll read together responsibly Psalm 30. I will exalt you, O Lord, because you have lifted me up and have not let my enemies triumph over me. O Lord my God, I cried out to you, and you restored me to health. You brought me up, O Lord, from the dead. You restored my life, and I was going down to the grave. Sing to the Lord, you servants of his. Give thanks for the remembrance of his holiness. For his wrath endures but for the twinkling of an eye. His favor for a lifetime. We can spend the night, but joy comes in the morning. While I felt secure, I said, I shall never be disturbed. You, Lord, with your favor, made me as strong as the mountains. And you made your face, and I was filled with fear. I cried to you, O Lord. I pleaded with the Lord, saying, What profit is there in my blood? If I go down to the pit, will the dust praise you or declare your faithfulness? Hear, O Lord, and have mercy upon me. O Lord, be my helper. You have turned my way into dancing. You have cut off my sackcloth and clothed me with joy. Therefore my heart sings to you without ceasing. O Lord my God, I will give you thanks forever. Now let's turn to uh, the second lesson, Galatians 1, verses 11 through 24. Apostle Paul. I want you to know, brothers, that the gospel I preached is not something that man made up. I did not receive it from any man, nor was I taught it. Rather, I received it by revelation from Jesus Christ. For you have heard of my previous way of life in Judaism, how intensely I persecuted the church of God and tried to destroy it. I was advancing in Judaism beyond many Jews of my own age and was extremely zealous for the traditions of my fathers. But when God, who set me apart from birth and called me by His grace, was pleased to reveal His Son in me so that I might preach Him among the Gentiles, I did not consult any man, nor did I go up to Jerusalem to see those who were apostles before I was. But I went immediately into Arabia and later returned to Damascus. <coughs> then after three years, I went up to Jerusalem to get acquainted with Peter and stayed with him 15 days. I saw none of the other apostles, only James, the Lord's brother. I assure you before God that when, what I am writing to you is no lie. Later I went to Syria and Cilicia, 
I was personally unknown to the churches of Judea that are in Christ. They only heard the report. The man who formerly persecuted us is now preaching the faith he once tried to destroy. And they praised God because of me. Thus ends the second lesson. Please rise for the gospel. Two more days. 
before even starting his journey back to Bethany to see his sick friend. Why did Jesus do this? Jesus gives the answer in verse 4. This sickness will not end in death, Jesus says. No, it is for God's glory, so that God's Son may be glorified through it. So with this in mind, let's take a closer look at the situation in today's Gospel text. The widow's son was already dead. This was actually the funeral procession taking him to his burial place. We're not told how he died or, or what caused his death. Now, not only was this poor widow mourning the death of her only son, but because of the death, she is now all alone. And being alone in a society like this, there were no provisions made for the care of a widow. A widow in those days was in a totally vulnerable position because no, there were no male relatives there to protect and provide for her. This particular woman had already lost her husband, and now she had lost her only son. This widow knows nothing of Jesus, so her world is limited to a darkened sphere of grief. She doesn't approach Jesus with any kind of a heartfelt plea, and she's too torn to even pray. Now we need to remember that Jesus has just come from healing the centurion servant. However, the situation here is much, much different. Last week we were presented with a confident and clear-thinking soldier. And in our gospel text for today, we have a vulnerable widow who is drowning in her own turbulent emotions. The centurion had an unquestioning faith. Just a few verses earlier in verse 7 of the same chapter we're studying today, the centurion says, but say the word and my servant will be healed. However, the widow's world not only contains grief with no hope for tomorrow. With the centurion, there is eloquence and protocol. With the widow, there is only unbridled pain and enough tears to dissolve the strongest prayers. Now here's what we need to pull from these two circumstances. These differences illustrate that Jesus doesn't demand that we fit into any set pattern to receive his help. Jesus doesn't restrain his compassion because we fail to meet our good deed quota. Or because we don't say the right words. Or because we forget to follow the correct ritual. Jesus, as the Lord of life, meets us right where we are, wherever we are, in either our life or faith circumstances. This brings us to the second reason he is the Lord of life. And that is because Jesus feels our grief. Verse 13 says, When the Lord saw her, he, his heart went out to her, and he said, Don't cry. Now there's some words used here that we need to take a closer look at. The first word we need to examine closely is the word saw. Now this comes from the Greek word orapo which means to perceive and discern. When Jesus saw her, he immediately grasped and felt the raw emotions that were happening inside the widow. The Greek word used here for his heart went out is the word splagnisomai. This Greek word is one of my favorite Greek words. And not because it's really long and sounds impressive. This word, splagnisomai, means to feel compassion as to be moved in the heart, the lungs, the liver, and kidneys. Jesus literally felt a compassion for this widow that was so deep that he felt it in his gut. So when Jesus perceived and discerned exactly what the widow was feeling, he was also feeling it deep within himself. Jesus was feeling 
also the social stigma the widow would have to bear as well as her emotions. This woman had not only lost her son, but also lost all of her means of support to live. As Jesus looked upon this woman, he saw that all her hope was gone. He saw a woman who was not only having to stand alone with death, but also would be subsequently judged by her own society and people. So in this last part of verse 13, Jesus says to the widow, don't cry. Jesus told her not to weep because he was about to turn her tears into a testimony. Jesus can also turn our tears into testimony. Keep close to your heart the great promise that we can find in the book of Hebrews chapter 4 verse 15 where it says, for we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses. Jesus was and continues to be moved by the hurts and sorrows of his people. Now notice something very interesting about our gospel text for today. The woman initiated nothing. She, she didn't do anything that got Jesus' attention for him to give any kind of a response to her condition. All the initiative in this conversation was taken by the Lord of life. And this act by Jesus was not in response to faith, but only, only in response to grief and human need. So we have a Lord of life who recognizes and feels our grief. The third reason he is our Lord of life is because Jesus conquers grief. Verses 14 through 15 tell us, Then he went up and touched the coffin, and those carrying it stood still. He said, Young man, I say to you, get up. The dead man sat up and began to talk, and Jesus gave him back to his mother. Jesus then touched the coffin, bringing to a halt the funeral procession. Then with absolutely no ceremony, Jesus simply instructs the boy to get up. Now, these words, get up, in the Greek are from the word egero, which means to arise and wake up. Without any recognizable sign of faith, Jesus gave the woman back to her son. Because he recognized and felt the widow's grief, Jesus then conquers her grief. And, and so he continues to do in our lives today. So when the Lord of life recognizes our grief, feels our grief, and then helps us to conquer our grief, what should our response be? Verse 16 tells us of the responses of the people who are present. And remember, Scripture tells us that there were two large crowds who were there. Verse 16 says this. They were all filled with awe and praised God. A great prophet has appeared among us, they said. God has come to help his people. These verses say that as a result of this miracle, there were two responses from the crowd. The first response was that they were filled with awe. A brush with death definitely has a way of changing the way a person looks at things. The truth is, at the end of our lives, the only thing that will truly matter is whether or not we settle the matter of where we are going to spend eternity. For those who carry the promise within their souls of the, the promise of eternal life in heaven, Yes, there, there is sadness about death. However, with those people, there is an incredible hope which lies close to their hearts. For those who have rejected the Lord of life, there is only hopelessness and despair at death. The second response from the crowd at this miracle from Jesus 
was to come to the conclusion that God has come to help his people. Just as this miracle reminds us of our own frailty and mortality, it also shouts to us of God's power over death and the grave. Death is not the end for those who know the Lord of life. For those who have accepted Jesus into their hearts, death will merely be a transfer to eternity. Know that. I ever went from that bed. She's in the arms of Jesus. And the really wonderful truth about our Lord of life is that he goes from conquering death of the widow's son to conquering death for all those when he took our sins upon himself on the cross as the last and final sacrifice for the atonement of those sins, our sins. Our Lord of life says this in the book of Revelation, chapter 1, verse 18. I am the living one. I was dead, and behold, I am able, I am alive forever and ever. And I hold the keys of death and Hades. Because death could not keep Jesus in the grave, we also, we also have the confidence that the the same confidence that the Apostle Paul expressed in the first book of Corinthians, chapter 15, verses 54 through 57, where he says this, Death has been swallowed up in victory. Where, O oh, death, is your victory? Where, O oh, death, is your sting? The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is the law. But thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Here's a story that might help understand why we believe in the Lord of life. A Muslim in Africa became a Christian, and some of his friends asked him why. So he then tells them what he sees as the important difference between Muhammad and Jesus. He says this, well, it's like this. Suppose you were going down a road, and suddenly the road forked in two directions, and you didn't know which way to go. If you met two men at the fork, one dead and one alive, which one would you ask to show the way? So this brings up a question. Who is showing you the way in your life? Is it the Lord of life? Or is it someone or something else? And if it is someone or something else, what promises of life does this person or thing give you both in this life and the next? The centurion's faith of the first 11 verses of chapter 7 inspires us. However, in truth, there's a good chance many of you may more directly identify more with the widow. You may envy the centurion's faith, but you're just not feeling that your life exhibits that kind of faith. Maybe secretly you wonder if Jesus even hears your prayers and notices your tears. Perhaps you're like the widow and your heart has run out of hope. So, they need to connect to the source that will recognize, feel, and conquer your grief. Invite Jesus into your life and into your heart and let the Lord of life bring you the strength, peace, and hope that nothing and no one else in this world can offer. Let us pray. Father in heaven, we thank you that as the Lord of life, you give us the promise of your Holy Spirit in our lives, and also the promise of eternal life with you in heaven when we die. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for this precious gift. 
Thank you for this precious gift that is your son who came to this world to be the sacrifice for our sins. That if we only believe, we have that promise from you of the forgiveness of all of our sins and the promise of eternal life. Lord God, we ask the Lord of life as your Holy Spirit to come right here, right now, to those who are in need of you and to recognize, feel, and conquer the grief that is in their lives. And we pray this in the holy, holy name of your Son, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Our next hymn is from the Green Hymnal, number 296, Just As I Am.
please rise as you are able for the Apostles' Creed. Let us all profess together the words that claim our Christian faith. I believe in God the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will now come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of life, and the life of people of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Father God, we ask you to pray for the family of Myra at this time, Carla and Sandy and Dean and all the family members. Lord, yeah, she's she's dancing in the streets of Golden Mother. Lord, we, we, we mourn for ourselves. Lord, bring peace. Bring strength to the family and all the friends, Lord. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for Pat and Lyle's son, Bob, who's going to have surgery here in a couple weeks on his shoulder, shoulder Lord. We're uh, praying that, uh, that there'll be a good surgery, perfect surgery. Have your arms around the, the surgeons at that time, Lord. Direct their, their hands and fingers where they need to go. And already we're going to pray for the, for the healing to happen. Start that already, Lord, so that there'll be a quick healing. We'll be able to get back to his job. Lord, we pray for... Mark's uh, father-in-law, Roger, Lord, that Lord got a praise there for a healthy surgery that happened last week. Lord, we're going to still pray for a quick recovery for him. Uh, give him peace and strength as there's that transition to a nursing home in his recovery period of rehabilitation. Lord, give him strength, healing, and peace. Father, there's a number of people who are on our hearts at this time who are in need of, of healing, whether that be in body or mind or spirit. Lord, send you healing spirit down this time to all of those who are on our hearts. Bring strength, bring healing and peace. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we pray for this church. And for all churches who are trying to stand upon your word and the truths that are within it. Lord, give us the strength as we walk out those doors into our mission field to be able to proclaim the truth that is within your son, Jesus. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for this. <clears throat> we repent of our sins and are turning our away from you and the wickedness of our sins, Lord. We stand as a congregation here to turn back to you, Lord, that you are still the one that we trust and we are one nation under God. Lord, in your mercy, hear us. Yeah. Lord, we pray for all of those soldiers who are fighting for those freedoms that, that we enjoy each and every day. Father, protect them. Protect them as they're in danger overseas and even right here in this country. Protect them, Lord, and bring them back and unite them with their families safely. Lord, in your mercy. Yeah. Lord, we pray for all those missionaries who are fighting on the front lines, spiritual front lines. They're in danger too, Lord, not only sometimes spiritually, but sometimes physically too. So, Lord, we pray for a protection for them in their health and from any human evil and from any evil of Satan. Give them the resources that they need, Lord, to do the ministries you have called each of them to do. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Lord, we still pray for all the victims of Oklahoma. The tragedy that happened there. The tragedies that are continually happening by some of the natural disasters in this country. Lord, be with those families. Surround them with the, the, fam the families and friends who can, who can give them their spiritual needs, Lord, and provide them with the resources from those from the awesome people of the Salvation Army, Samaritan's Purse, all those people who would ever provide those resources, Lord, empower them and give them the resources to help them. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. If there's anyone who any, has any prayers that they'd like to make at this time, please go ahead and say that. Thank you. 
pray that um, you will continue, just as you have for <coughs> many, many centuries and years, and that you will continue to come to us as we call out to you. Lord, we need you, and we need you to walk beside us each day, and there's nothing we can do without you beside us and your help. So, Father God, I, I pray that you will lift this church up today, each member, each extended family member, all, Father, that needs your help in your mercy. You are better. Heavenly Father, we pray for the healing for ourselves and for this congregation and for others that surround us. But we also ask for your healing prayer for the nations, as we know there are some that are sitting down now and talking on problems. Be with them, guide them, give them the strength to do what is necessary, to do what is right. And we ask specifically for your nation, Israel, surrounded by many enemies. All of these things need your attention as well as ourselves. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commit all for whom we pray. Those we pray for out loud and those we pray for in our hearts. Trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you always. And also with you. Please share that peace of God with one another. <laughs>
Now go in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.